Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and today I'll be showing you how to use quizzes. So when you go to quizzes, you can either just go ahead and start by using search quizzes or join a game, or if you already have an account, log in or sign up to make an account. If you have a Google account, it's really easy to make one. You basically just sign in to your Google account. So once you get in, you will see at the top there's a search bar. You can search for quizzes by any subject or topic, or you can click on one of these popular category buttons. And then when you click on that or type in what you were searching for, it's going to bring up all of the suggestions down there. And you go over these, when you hover over them, it will bring you a review of what the questions are going to be like. So you don't have to click on all of them. So we're going to go ahead and click on one. There's a few different things that you can do. First, you can see all the questions below and you can see what the answers are. You can also start a live game, which is like the Kahoot, where you would start a game and they would just start their quiz. You have all these different settings so that if you wanted to give them more attempts, you could make them have a login and change the attempts. Show the leaderboard, question timer, all these different things. You could also add memes to make it a little more fun. You could do a homework game, which you have all the same settings. And then you would just go ahead and set a due date in a time and it would tell you the exact amount of time that students have to do it from your hosting so they would just do it whenever they have free time or you could do a solo game which is like testing it out before or students could do it on their own if they have an account you could share it through social media or through email you could duplicate it too duplicating it is the coolest thing because when you do that you can edit it when you edit, you can delete questions, you could edit them. When you edit them, you can change the answers, you can change the question, you could change whether it's one answer or if it's select all. You can also change the time for the question. You can add questions by creating your own or by searching from other people's quizzes. So we'll type in addition and it's going to bring up quizzes of addition and I can just add the question like that and it'll add it to the bottom. So then I click finish quiz to save it. If you wanted to create your own quiz, a whole new one, you would just click on create new quiz. You would do that the same way that you edited an existing quiz. And you could also align quizzes to state standards. So we're going to go ahead and start a live game to show you, for example. So, you know, I have my settings the way I want them. You can change them. You can also edit the title if you wanted. You click host game. It brings up the link and the game code that you need in order for students to get to your game. So we're going to bring up a window so that you can see from what the student side would look like. You're going to type in the game code. Once they have their game code in, they type in a name. Say they bring up a name that you don't want them to use or is inappropriate for the class. If you click on their name on the teacher's end and you click remove, you can just remove it. And then from there, it'll tell them that they were kicked out. So they'd have to retype in their game code. And then if they tried to use the same name again, it won't let them. So they need a new name. All right, so they're in the game. So we're going to go ahead and click Start. So after the game starts on the teacher's end, you can see there's an accuracy bar and then all the students listed as well as the questions. So we're just going to click on some answers so that you can see how it kind of goes. You can see there's the meme that makes it a little fun. There's also a leaderboard so students can see how they're doing. We're going to click on a wrong answer. So on the teacher's end, on the leaderboard, you can see you know, how many they got wrong, how many they got right. You can also see on the questions which ones are wrong and right. They're only not in order because the questions are shuffled. So say, for example, something happens and you have to end the game. You go ahead and you click End Game. So this will not affect whether you get your statistics. You will get them, but keep in mind they might not be 100% accurate. It might say that they did worse than they did because it takes all questions into account. Alright, so at the top you have these few statistics, the highlights, which helps you to see the toughest question which is going to be helpful because you can see where students are struggling and what they really need help learning like concept wise. You could also see where they struggle the longest to get the answer. You could see the class accuracy as a whole. So down here you can see a whole chart 
what questions they got wrong, which ones they got right, it will mark the ones that they did not do as wrong. So take that into account. You can click on this if you want to email it to their parents. You could click on questions, it'll do the same thing as the students, but with the questions. Click on standards. If there's state standards, they will be included here and in how the goal was met for those. The really cool thing about quizzes is that at the end, there's this download Excel button. If you click on this, it will download an Excel spreadsheet of the results from the quiz. So we're going to go ahead and click on that, and here you can see how the student did. If there were more students, they would just go to the right. So down here, you can see all the questions that were asked. And you can see which ones were correct in this column and incorrect in this and how, what they were unattempted. So most of them were unattempted because we ended it early. So you can see here, hers was green. That means it was right and the red is wrong. And this, her percentage of accuracy, that's as a whole. So make sure you remember that. She actually more like got a 50% because you only did two questions. But that's pretty much it for quizzes. It's a really good tool, you know, to do quick formative assessments. You get immediate feedback and you can save it for your record keeping. You can see where students need help, where they're really excelling, where they might need more practice concept wise. So it's really a good tool to go ahead and use maybe at the end of class before they go. So you can see where you might need to do a recap at the beginning of next class. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great day.